Opinions expressed on this radio program do not necessarily reflect the views of this radio station. Todd never sugarcoats it. Does he tell it straight? You bet. Does he deliver with a sense of humor? Always. I always start my Sunday mornings off listening to the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. It has tons of information, and he has such a great sense of humor. My friends and I always tune in to the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. Hold on tight. Don't let go. It's time for the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. Welcome to the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. Good morning, good evening, and good night. I'm yours truly, Attorney Todd L. Levitt, broadcasting once again in the middle of the mitten in a beautiful green nutrient field. I mean, the field is overgrown. It's ready to uh, have some attention here. (laughs) I'm in the mothership. Craig Russell, The Hustle. How you doing, Craig? I'm good, Todd. How are you? I'm so stoked right now. We have a huge show. This show is going to be bigger than the Little John show. Sorry, Little John. We love you. Than any show we've done in the past 25 years. 25 years? before we start, Craig. Yes. Years. Years. I have to have a talk with you. Okay. I want to make sure that when you and I are conversating off the air, that you don't do something that annoys the piss out of me. What would that be? When you call someone on the phone. And I think the listeners are going to agree with me on this. If I call you, do not put me on speakerphone without first telling me, hey, Todd, by the way, you're on speakerphone. Watch what you say. I was talking to someone a week ago, and after three minutes, they mentioned, they just happened to mention that I was on speakerphone. And I could hear other people in the background. I'm just thinking, what if I said something confidential or something that whoever was in the background, I did not want them to hear Whatever it was I was saying, I think it's completely rude. If you're going to call someone, you better tell them that they're on speakerphone. You know, Todd, usually you tell me things when you complain about stuff, and sometimes I go along with you and sometimes I don't. This one, I'm 138% completely going along with you on this one. Now, you are a lawyer. What if you end up talking to somebody about some highly classified a personal information that you don't need anyone else to know and you don't know when you're on a speakerphone, that's not good. That's not good at all. They should tell you you're on a speakerphone if you're on a speakerphone. Yeah, and I'm not referring to any situation with a client. This was just somebody, you know, a personal friend of mine, and thank goodness I didn't say anything that would have uh, that would have been inappropriate if there was, you know, young kids or relatives or someone visiting. Or how about if there's ladies around? I don't want to say anything to offend anybody. Sure. I'm not necessarily a politically correct kind of guy, but still, I just think if you're on, and I, I have some people in the mothership right now, they totally agree with me on this completely. It's just, I need to know if I'm on speakerphone. Craig, am I on speakerphone right now? Is there anyone else listening besides just you and I and the entire world? You and I are on speakerphone right now, but I'm not, nobody else can hear you. So yes, it's true. Ah, That's outstanding. Craig, we have a huge show for the listeners. We have stories in regards to Snoop Dogg and Sir Patrick Stewart have invested in a British cannabinoid technology company. We're going to be talking about that. The World Series of Poker champion is told by officials to cover his sponsor's logo. We're going to be talking about that. Casinos and the feds and cannabis. You get that, Craig? Casinos, feds, cannabis. Oh, yeah. Poker tournament. I think you know where that's going. Oh, yeah. Jen from my office provided us with a story. It's my favorite story of the show in regards to something that happened with marijuana seeds out in Powell, Wyoming. And we have so much more to get to. We have an international flavor. We have a story about cannabis from France, Canada, 
and a few other nations. What do you have for us, Craig? I've got a story about the very first country that ever legalized cannabis in the world and how people can learn from that and another country that wants to be the biggest exporter of cannabis in the world and a country and a- okay i know those two countries i'm not going to say it let the listeners think about that okay we also have some a story about italy and cannabis and australia and cannabis this show is going worldwide it's not just the united states of weed on the dot level law show it's the world wide of weed on the Tile Levitt Law Show. The wide world of weed. I love it. And it's true because you can hear us all across the country. Not only can you hear us on 98.5 and Rock 105 and Rock 95.5 in Michigan, but you can hear us. It's podcasted all over the country and all over the world. Find us on Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, you name it. And we've got tons of people who listen all over the world. Craig, we have a huge show for the listeners. And again, if somebody calls you and you're going to put them on speakerphone, be sure to tell them that they're on speakerphone. I just think that's just obnoxious and rude to do so otherwise. And before we go to break, as promised, Mitch from Pure Vitality is here. Mitch, welcome to the show. Before we go to break, tell the listeners I love Pure Vitality. I love that floating pod. I can't get enough of it. What is Pure Vitality? Yeah, so we're a family business. It's my mom, my brother, my dad, and myself. We're located downtown Mount Pleasant at 128 East Broadway, right across from Max and Emily's. And we're really excited to be a part of the Mount Pleasant community. This is a great community. It's beautiful. We love the downtown. Everyone's super supportive of us. Um, We're located at 128 East Broadway. Um, And my favorite service of ours is our float pod. It's incredible. There's a thousand pounds of Epsom salt. You float no matter what effortlessly on your back. And if you want, you can do any color of light. You can play a relaxing music. But how I float personally, I turn the light and the music off because there's no light, no sound, no gravity, and no sense of feel because the water's the same temperature as your skin. So if you lay really still, eventually your brain will think that you're asleep because there's no outside stimuli. So your brain's able to go into the most relaxed state, the theta state. Each float is one hour, and we give you 10 minutes before I end a shower and get ready and Yeah, so our juice bar has all natural juices and smoothies. We don't add any preservatives. We don't add any purees. We don't add any granulated sugar. Everything's super healthy, but the kicker is it still tastes really good at the same time. Yeah, so check out our website at uh, mipurevitality.com. And I would love to have your listeners come down to check out our juice bar and spa. I'd love to personally give them a tour. I know you're all over Michigan, Todd, and I know that you're all over the country as well and in some other countries. So, yeah, we'd love to have everyone come down and love to give them a tour. Thanks, Mitch. Uh, After the show, I'm going to leave the middle of the uh, beautiful nutrient field and go take a floating pod. I love that floating pod. Hey, Craig, we have to go to break, but uh, when we come back from break, we're going to have a lot more cannabis talk. We have some great stories for the listeners. And later in the show, we're going to have Mitch and Grant, his brother, back on the show to tell you more about Pure Vitality after a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. The Todd L. Levin Law Show thanks you for listening to our podcast. If you have a business you think people would want to hear about, the Todd L. Levin Law Show accepts advertising. We can promote your business to a very specialized, targeted audience. Any size commitment and any budget. Email Show at gmail.com for more information about sponsoring and advertising on the Todd L. Levin Law Show podcast. Welcome back to the Todd L. Levitt Law Show, broadcasting and podcasting from the middle of the Minton, pure Michigan, baby. And for those of you listening around the country, around the world, if you look at the map of the United States, Michigan is shaped like a mitten. 
And we have the Upper Peninsula, otherwise known as the Great State of Superior. I love the Great State of Superior. Coming back strong with Red Hot Chili Peppers, Craig. I love Red Hot Chili Peppers. And big announcement, we said it last week, Dr. Bob Townsend, one of my favorite people, Dr. Bob Townsend from the middle of the mitten is coming on the show next week to discuss, amongst other things, because he's a medical doctor, how the medical profession is being influenced by various uh, government agencies, the American Medical Association, and what is the issue uh, in regards to patients being denied care uh, if they test positive and or are medical marijuana card holders. So big show next week with Dr. Bob Craig. That's always awesome. Dr. Bob is a great guest, and he will explain lots of uh, interesting things about that. But uh, this show has an international flair this week. We're talking about cannabis and marijuana all over the free world and even the occupied world. Is that not correct? That is correct. And a big shout out to my uh, ancestral homeland, if I can <laughs> say it that way. Did I say that right? You did. Italy. Big shout out to Italy. Back in 2007 is when they first legalized medical cannabis. Big shout out to Italy in regards to the medical cannabis. 2007. So uh, it's been around for a while in Italy. What do you have for us, Craig? Well, I've got for you the very first country in the world that legalized marijuana. You said you think you knew what it was. What country is it? I do, as a matter of fact, because we talked about this about four weeks on the show. I'm going to say Central to South America. Am I close? You are close. Uruguay. Uruguay. Big shout out to all of our friends in Uruguay. And now they are doing more research and doing more studies. They've gotten a paper from the Brookings Institution shining the spotlight on the South American nation that is giving a clearer look at some of the lessons other countries that are legalizing, whether it's medicinal or for recreational use, things that they can learn for some of the stuff that happened in Uruguay. Uruguay is not a very big country. It's about the size of, eh, well, at least money-wise, it's the size of North Dakota. But they've uh, they've really been successful with what they've tried to do with legalization, and they've really it's helped this country. I mean, because this country is a poor country in South America, and the legalization has really helped them out. And it, it's 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 a model for how other countries could do it, including in the United States. And I think eventually we'll get to that point. But at this point, Uruguay, the very first country to legalize it, the government does a really good job of not only providing information for its citizens, but helping them uh, and, and also having the, the citizens when they buy legalized uh, cannabis, how it helps the country out as well. And it's been, it's a really interesting paper. I got a question for you, Craig, and this is something for the listeners to think about. Okay. Time and time again, I've read articles, I've talked to people, I've traveled the country, I've been out of the country. Which country would you say grows some of the best medical, medicinal, cannabis in the world i mean obviously each country you know there's a lot of professional growers out there we're not knocking any of them we love them but what, what what's the number one country that you hear time and time again is just moving to the forefront take a shot at it well i would have to say it's uh, not only the subject of music songs but definitely in popular culture columbia is definitely a place that grow some of the best marijuana in the world. I have a, a number of friends from Colombia, a number of doctor friends of mine, beautiful country, beautiful people. I'm referring to Canada. Canada, and a big shout-out to all our listeners to the north. We love Canada. We love hockey. We love Brian Adams. Speaking of Canada, how do you – I mean, Brian Adams is from Canada. Canada, time and time again, gets mentioned as the country that just grows – and produces some of the best medicinal cannabinoids, CBDs, you know, hemp, marijuana. I mean, big shout out to Canada. We love you, Canada. I grew up 20 minutes from the Canadian border. I was going over to Canada from Detroit to Windsor when I was 15, 14 years old there, Craig. And, you know, that's true. And if you live in a border state, one of the states like Michigan or uh, New York or things like that, Canada is an easy trek to go over. And, of course, as you have said many times before, you've traveled to Canada maybe to partake in things that are legal in Canada, especially when you were younger. And uh, and I'm sure that probably still happens quite a bit. Snoop Dogg. 
<laughs> How's that? Snoop Dogg and Sir Patrick Stewart There's a segue. have both invested in a British company uh, referred to as OCT Oxford Cannabinoid Technologies that's involved in medical research in Great Britain. Cannabis is still illegal in the United Kingdom, but uh, they're having some headway in regards to medical research and what's allowed and not allowed. So Snoop Dogg's invested, I think, up to $10 million. Sir Patrick Stewart sits on the board, and I understand he's an investor in uh, this company, in British uh, British company, Craig. And that information came to me from the Cannabis World News, one of my favorite online publications, the Cannabis News World, World News, however you refer to it as. But uh, big shout-out to Snoop Dogg and Sir Patrick Stewart. So it, is, it looks as if uh, Great Britain is making some inroads. Uh, how about France? Do you think uh, marijuana is legal or illegal in France, Craig? Uh, cannabis, I would say illegal in France. Yes, you are correct. Cannabis in France is illegal and as far as i know and i haven't researched this thoroughly there's not any movement on behalf of the government to allow any form of legalization or medical form of uh, cannabis consumption and i'm willing to bet though that the uh, citizens of france partake in in the medicinal aspects of the uh, the plant, what do you think? Well, I'll say this much. First place, France, you know, who won the World Cup soccer tournament last week. I'm sure having some of these celebrities like a Snoop Dogg, like a Sir Patrick Stewart, is going to help countries, especially a country that is... Uh, you know, France has got a is is pretty big in popular culture, and people like a Sir Patrick Stewart and like a Snoop Dogg, that might help advance their cause a little bit hey before we go to break todd i've got to make a mention snoop dog you ready to, ready for this a second we're gonna play a little game show here are you ready to play a game todd absolutely okay we're gonna play family feud because snoop dog was a family feud topic a couple of days ago i saw it on tv and here we go all right here we go top four answers on the board what is snoop dog mostly known for Ding! What would be you think the number one answer would be that Snoop Dogg's mostly known for? Marijuana. Eh. He's actually he's known more for being a rapper. What do you think the second thing he's most known for? Hold on a second. <laughs> I didn't want to go with the obvious. I love Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, West Coast vibe. I mean, come on. I'm a product of the 80s, run DMC, even though I'm a metalhead, a thrasher, a trasher, a grunger. A mosh pit former guy. I hear bands from the 80s, Black Sabbath, Pink Floyd, you know, Clarence. I can go Led Zeppelin. I got into the beats when uh, Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre, you know, brought forth the West Coast sound. Of course, I know he's a rapper, uh, you know, with Nate G. Come on now. But uh, I thought that was the obvious answer, so I said he's a rapper. Second, I would say he's a football coach. I know that he coaches Pee Wee football. But he's just a big advocate for the end of federal prohibition, so I figured I'd say marijuana. Well, yeah, marijuana's right. That's what he's secondly most known for, but he's most known for being a rapper. Secondly, he's most known for marijuana. Third, he's most known for being tall. And fourth, he's most known for having cornrows. But first is rapper, second is marijuana. You're absolutely correct. You got you you would have won family. You would have won family. You would, have, you would have won family for you, Todd. Congratulations. You and your family just won fast money. You're winning $20,000. Good job. I love Snoop Dogg. I, lo- I, I do. I love Snoop Dogg. I mean, he, he's great. Just try, don't try to pull a Richard Dawson on me and try to give me a kiss because that's not going to work. <laughs> I'm just telling you right now. No. And as I said in the first segment, if you're just tuning in, if I'm calling you and you have me on speakerphone, you better tell me, because I just think it's really rude. Hey, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to the Todd L. Levitt Law Show with my good friend Craig Russell, The Hustle. We're broadcasting, blaring across the universe, but uh, specifically we're on 95 WUPS, Rock 105, 95.5, part of the Black Diamond Group. We're in the mothership. Uh, Pure Vitality's in the studio. I'm going to be doing a floating pod after the show, getting some uh, fruit smoothies. We have Grant and Mitch just enjoying the show. Of course. Uh, love Pure Vitality here in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. We have a lot more news and information for the listeners to get to, Craig. Uh, we have to get 
a word from our sponsors in here at some point. Yes, we do. So let's go to break. The Todd L. Levin Law Show thanks you for listening to our podcast. If you have a business you think people would want to hear about, the Todd L. Levin Law Show accepts advertising. We can promote your business to a very specialized, targeted audience. Any size commitment and any budget. Email Todd Levitt Law Show at gmail.com for more information about sponsoring and advertising on the Todd L. Levitt Law Show podcast. Welcome back to the Todd L. Levitt Law Show, broadcasting once again in the middle of the mitten, a beautiful nutrient field here. Uh, yes, I am a criminal defense attorney practicing all across the northern middle of the mitten and across the bridge in the great state of Superior. We have a lot of listeners in the 906 area code. In, in addition to our you know podcast uh, family out there, we love our friends, our uh, uh, in South Dakota and all over the country and around the world. Uh, but I am a criminal defense attorney. I specialize in cannabis consultation. I have an office right now in Mount Pleasant, Michigan, St. Ignace, and I'm opening one in Marquette, Michigan, Craig. And next week, speaking of someone with an office in Marquette, Dr. Bob Townsend is coming on oh, the yeah. show. That's awesome. He's a good guy. He will have lots of interesting things to talk about, especially on the cannabis front. He is uh, one of the foremost physicians in the state of Michigan uh, that is subs- uh, subscribing to uh, cannabis, medicinal marijuana, helping patients, and he will be, have a lot of interesting things to say. I have a number of uh, questions from listeners in regards to doctors and medicine and medical marijuana and the pharmaceutical company. So we're going to be covering all those topics next week. Be sure you tune in to the show. If you miss us, catch us on podcast. Hey, Craig, how about a story out of uh, Wyoming, the great state of Wyoming? (laughs) This is pretty funny. And I didn't know if this is true or not. Jen, who works for me here in my office, I have Jackie and Jen, Jen and Jackie. Somebody planted marijuana seeds in the city owned flower pots. This is, this is, I, this is one of my favorite stories of the year. So the city workers unknowingly cared for these seeds and plants, and eventually, after a certain period of time went by and the nutrients uh, were dosed out and the weather was appropriate, uh, the plants grew, and someone from uh, the park and rec, uh, an employee, noticed them, someone familiar with the beautiful plant, and that uh, was brought to their attention. So, again, someone planted marijuana seeds in the city-owned flower pots I mean, what a hoot is that, Craig? That is hilarious. The the marijuana planting fairy went around through that town in Wyoming, and I have it on good authority. That is a legitimate story. That is honest to God. People were digging up the flower pots, looking for the marijuana, even after some of it had been removed. They thought maybe they'd be able to find a golden treasure or like a ticket, like Willy Wonka or something like that. That is crazy. That is that's a funny story. I love that story. Hey, do you ever catch the World Series of Poker on ESPN? I do. I actually watched the final table a few nights ago when it was on last week. I watched it. Yep. Well, there's a story that was on the wire, and the poker champion is sponsored by Blum, Blum Dispensaries, B-L-U-M. They're located in Las Vegas, Nevada. Great company, great business. And he had a logo on his shirt. Then he moved it to his hat because they felt it would get better exposure while he's on national TV. And uh, so he wore this logo a number of times. And all of a sudden, one of the officials approached him and told him, and he's the poker champion, he's won a number of years in a row, that he had to cover up his logo. They would not allow a cannabis-sponsored logo to be part of the World Series of Poker. I was just shocked by this, but I understood it, but I was still shocked by it. 
What's your thoughts? I understand it too to an extent. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't marijuana a legal product in the state of Nevada? Legal, but the casinos are federally regulated, and these apparently these poker players they sign waivers and have to sign agreements, and obviously nobody reads the fine print. The tournament and the casinos do not want to associate themselves because of federal regulations with the marijuana industry. What a, I mean, I understand it, but again, the federal government needs to get off their tail. Look, elections are coming up in November. Here's what I have to say, Craig. I'm literally going to call every single representative in the state of Michigan and every individual who's running for the, the Senate and the governorship and every other office, and I'm going to take a poll. And I'm going to find out which candidates are cannabis friendly and which ones are not. And Normal does a great job of this, as do other advocacy groups here in the state of Michigan around the country. But I want to advise, I want to call to action all of our listeners to do the same. We live in a great democracy, the great United States of America. I want to find out who's for it, who's against it, and if they're going to take office, what's their position going to be on removing cannabis from Schedule 1 and stop this ridiculousness already to name a show off MTV Ridiculous, however you say that. I mean, it's just obnoxious already. I mean, enough's enough. Free the weed. Free the weed. Um, I'll say this much, at least uh, for Blum's sake, he was able to get it on TV for a good while. You know, I mean, he was on... He obviously he played in the final table and he won. So there was a good at least one night of time. No, Blum is the company. The guy, the 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 champion's not Blum. Blum is the company. B L U M. It's a great provisioning center. Um, beautiful facilities. Uh, look it up online if you're ever out in Nevada, Las Vegas. Definitely check out Blum. But uh, right now, you know, in Vegas they have a huge, huge uh, expo each year in regards to the industry. And my understanding is also that uh, that may not take place at the casinos. And that's why it's so important for the federal government. I mean, look how much money's involved here. The states have spoken, the people have spoken, and yet the government will not get out of our way. I thought the government was there to help us. And again, I'm a patriot. I love the Constitution. I love our country. My family has fought. There are veterans in my family. I support our flag. I support the government. But the government's for the people. And I just want the government, who's supposed to represent us, the people, to get the heck out of our way and let us exercise our sovereign rights to live the way we want to live. Enough of this already, Craig. I'm sorry. I'm a little pissed off right now. Well, I'll say this much, Todd. What do we often say on this show? We're not Republicans. We're not Democrats. We are Americans. And this refers to not just the cannabis industry. It refers to everything else that the government gets their hands on and just destroys from health care to taxes i mean at least the taxes are getting a little bit better with what just happened last year with some of the laws that were passed but again government is way too big it's way too big i just want to live you know i want to live free and we need government because we do need some control or society would be completely chaotic we need law enforcement we love our men and women in in uniform but again government's just way too big there's too many people who are employed in government jobs in Washington and at the state levels. And they just need, you know, we just need to cut back. I'm not running for office, Craig, but if I was running for office, I would not be towing the party line. You know, you hear that all the time. Oh, I'm going to Congress. If you elect me, I'm going to go in the House, I'm going to go in the Senate, and I'm going to represent your interest. And then they get to Washington, they get to the state capitals, and what do they do? They, they tow the party line, the men and women who have been there before them, they have to fall in line. And if they don't fall in line, what happens, folks, is they don't get placed on committees. You always see men and women being interviewed on TV, Craig, and, you know, they're on this committee, that committee. Well, when you have seniority, you get on the more favorable committees, and then you have the, the interest groups who are part of those committees and have an interest in the, the success of those committees, and they, don't, they donate more money to your campaigns. It's all about money, ain't a damn thing funny. Quoting Snoop Dogg, West Coast style there. (laughs) The great President Ronald Reagan said, government is not the solution to our problems. It's gotten too big. It's supposed to help us. Government's gotten too big. The government has gotten too big. And it's funny because the Republicans are the ones who are in charge right now. And you would think they'd want to decrease the size of the government, including things like getting rid of 
all these federal regulations and things like that. Let the states make their minds up about this stuff. They've already allowed them to do this in half the union. Over half of our country has some form of legalized marijuana, whether it's either medicinal or recreational. There are, there are some good things going on. There are some good things going on right now, Craig. There are some good things going on. Got the States Act. There have been some cutbacks in some of the regulations, uh, the taxes. We need a lot more uh, movement on health care. I mean, if I, I don't even get me started on health care. Oh, I know. Uh, but look, like I said, I'm going to call every single – right now it's election season. You, signs are popping up not only at the local level but the state level, the federal level. I'm going to be contacting every one of the candidates. And actually, Dr. Bob's running for office. We can talk to Dr. Bob about this. Oh, yeah, um, that's right. And, uh, but I'm going to be asking every candidate what their position is, not just on cannabis and, and federal prohibition, get it out of Schedule 1, but I want to make sure my Second Amendment rights are protected. You know, I, There's a lot of things that I want to talk to these candidates about. I'm going to hold them to the fire. I'm going to say, look, if you tell me this is what you're standing for and you go to office, I mean, I have a platform here. If, if you, you know, if you don't keep your promises, I'm going to inform the people that you didn't keep your promises. Yeah, that's right. Hey, we've got to take a break. But when we come back, we have a story about the next country in the world that could be legalizing marijuana on the international edition of the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. We'll be right back. The Todd L. Levitt Law Show thanks you for listening to our podcast. If you have a business you think people would want to hear about, the Todd L. Levitt Law Show accepts advertising. We can promote your business to a very specialized, targeted audience. Any size commitment and any budget. Email Show at gmail.com for more information about sponsoring and advertising on the Todd L. Levitt Law Show podcast. Welcome back to the Todd L. Levitt Law Show, broadcasting and podcasting from the middle of the mitten. What a beautiful mothership in a nutrient field. I'm taking a floating pod later on, Craig. These floating pods. I know. you got to check out this floating pod at Pure Vitality in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. I can't get enough of floating and 1,000 pounds of Epsom salt, listening to music, just chillaxing. My brain is so relaxed, it's unbelievable. And Grant's going to be coming on here. End of the segment to talk a little bit about they have these awesome infrared saunas, and uh, it's just I just it's one of my favorite places. I'm there every day. That's why I can't say enough about it. So get, if you get down to Mount Pleasant, Michigan, or you're traveling through the state, make sure you get the Pure Vitality. But hey, Craig, you have some more international flavor stories to get to. This whole show has been international flavored. Can you name the next country in the world that is looking to legalize marijuana? Any idea? Well, I know it's not Australia because Australia still illegal it's not france we talked about france earlier in the show italy back in 2007 legalized medical uh marijuana great britain is finally accepting different forms of medical forms of extracts and and other products and there's some movement there snoop dogs involved in that i'm gonna say and i you know we talked about countries all over the world i know israel already has it legal uruguay I'm going to say it's somewhere other than Africa, South America, or Europe, uh, or North America, because we already know about the states and we already know about Canada. So I'm going to say it's somewhere northern Africa. I don't know. Where is it at, Craig? It's Lebanon. You're you're really close, the Middle Eastern part of the world. Lebanon, this is a country that has been just in a horrible, horrible economic tailspin, and they've decided that legalizing marijuana 
it could be a $1 billion business a year for the little country of Lebanon, and it's going to help them there in just terrible financial crisis. This is what we find not only all over the world, but all over the country as well. States that legalize marijuana, countries that legalize marijuana, whether it's medicinal or recreational, it is an economic boon to that country. And places like Lebanon and countries that are poor countries in the Middle East and things like that, this is a this is a way for them to really help not only the citizens of their country, but their countries as well. You know, some of these countries are really fragile regimes, and all of a sudden, economically, they could go in a tailspin, and next thing you know, that country's gone. This is a way for them to not only raise money and help their people and their country, but help ensure that their country's going to be around a lot. It's amazing. A product that's millions of years old, like hemp and marijuana and cannabis is, is now turning out to be a 21st century go-to for countries when, who need economic help. That's some great information, Craig. Hey, I'm going to deviate for a moment here. Um, I had a, an email from a listener, uh, her, listens to the show every week, not from Michigan, actually from Florida, and wanted to know, in Michigan, can you be convicted of operating while intoxicated if you're on a moped. If you're on a moped, Craig, what, what do you think? Can you be convicted of drinking and operating a, a vehicle if you're on a moped? Absa 100% lutely. Yes. You are correct, and you pay attention to the show. I mentioned a few weeks back that I had a client a number of years back that was on a tractor, a big tractor, pulled over on a public roadway on the way to a store to purchase more liquor, and this individual was highly intoxicated, and uh, it's a motorized vehicle on a public roadway or a parking lot accessible to a, a public roadway in the state of Michigan. And in the state of Michigan, pure Michigan baby, yes, you can be convicted of operating while intoxicated or visibly impaired or super drunk or under 21, zero tolerance, on a moped. I would imagine if you were walking down the street and you were visibly intoxicated, you could be arrested for public drunkenness, correct? Municipalities have local ordinances in relation to public intoxications. It's, nor, it's, it's typically a local ordinance that you're violating. So, yes, if you're out in public and intoxicated, a threat to yourself, a threat to others, you're disturbing the peace, you could be arrested and charged in the state of Michigan with a misdemeanor. So common sense says if you could be arrested just by walking and being intoxicated and you could be arrested by being on a moped, any kind of motorized vehicle and being intoxicated, you could even be on a fat bike, like your bike that you shred the gnar with. You could be riding a bike intoxicated and could get arrested. Could you not? Well, okay. If you, that's a great question. Obviously, if you're shredding the gnar as I do on a single track, or off a single track, as I do on my beautiful uh, salsa spearfish. I call her Lady Spearfish. She's like my girlfriend. She's beautiful, carbon fiber. I mean, you should see the rims on this bike. <laughs> if I'm intoxicated, obviously it's not a motorized vehicle, but if I'm intoxicated in public causing a disturbance, then I'm, I could be charged with public intoxication if there's a local ordinance, or, 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 or depending on what state you're in, if there's a state statute, or... Disturbing the peace, another misdemeanor. So you could be anywhere in public, and if you're causing a public disturbance, the community in which you live in, you could be arrested, fine, ticketed. It depends on the community you live in. So it's always good to check the local laws if you plan on possibly being uh, doing some uh, celebrating or inebriating. You want to make sure you're safe in your area. And, of course, if anything ever does happen to you, and uh, maybe you do get arrested for one of these charges, 989-772-6000. Todd Levitt, call him. He will help you. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, Craig, uh, coming up in future shows, we're going to have John Marco back on the show, uh, attorney Danny Baines coming on the show. We're going to be talking about Social Security, disability, family law, probate law. We're not just going to talk about cannabis each week. The reason we talk about cannabis each week because we love to talk about cannabis each week. Next week, Dr. Bob's coming on the show. Dr. Bob Townsend will be on the show. Craig, we only have a few minutes left. Uh, Grant Mitch from Pure Vitality Juice and Spa in Mount Pleasant, Michigan, has been sitting in a mothership. I'd like to get Grant on the, on the show here uh, momentarily to talk about some of the other products and services. Hi, Todd. So great being with you here today. So our saunas, let me explain that to you. Uh, 
an infrared sauna is a little different than a traditional sauna. It's going to heat you up from the core instead of heating up the air. So it's much more comfortable to be in than a traditional sauna. And it's also a much more powerful tool of detoxing. So things that you need to detox from is just things we accumulate from day to day life, whether it be in our food or just the air we breathe. At Pure Vitality, we've designed our juices and smoothies to deliver the optimal nutrients that your gut brain needs to function. The gut brain is a colony of bacteria inside of your stomach that regulates a lot of bodily processes. Todd, again, I just want to thank you for being on your show. This is such a great show. I love this show. I listen to it every week. Super impressive. And you know, I just want to tell your listeners, the infrared sauna is incredible. Like, it is just a complete game changer for me. It's infrared is all the good rays from the sun without the bad UV rays. So especially in the winter time, you're dealing with a little uh, seasonal depression. Really helped me this winter a lot. And a thing I like about the sauna a lot is in a half an hour, you're going to burn 300 calories. Not just to talk about the toxins, but just straight calories. So like, you know, it sounds kind of lazy. That's how I work out, man. I sit in the sauna. I do that sauna three days a week to stay in shape. Like, I love it. And I'm going to tell you guys... Pure Vitality, Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Great family, great looking family. This family looks like they should have a reality show. I'd love to see the Pure Vitality reality show, Juice Bar and Spot, Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Craig, I want to thank Grant and Mitch for taking time to come on the show. I'm going to go take a floating pod here and get some uh, smoothies after the show. Next week, folks, be sure to tune in. Dr. Bob Townsend, medical doctor, is going to be on talking about anything and everything. So, Craig, what a show. I'll see you same place, same time next week, Craig. And we'll see you at Pure Vitality. You'll be floating in the pods again probably later this afternoon if I know you, won't you? Absolutely. Craig, listeners, we appreciate you. We love you. We'll see you same time, same place next week. We'll catch you on podcast all over the universe. I'm not just a litigator. Take us out, Red Hot Chili Peppers. I love the flea. I'm an advocator. The Todd L. Levitt Law Show, brought to you by Chad Malleywell Drilling of Rosebush. Clark Modular Homes, your most experienced and trusted builder in Mount Pleasant. Mackinac Properties and Northern Michigan Vacation Rentals, buying, selling, and renting properties in the Straits of Mackinac region since 1998. Tim's Collision Plus in Ross Common. Harrison Power Sports, Central Michigan's fastest growing full line Arctic Cat dealer. And Dr. Robert Townsend and Denali Healthcare for your alternative healthcare needs. Opinions expressed on this radio program do not necessarily reflect the views of this radio station.